Hi, I'm Aaron Sylvan. In this great city, New York, this is my home. After last year's election, our mayor reported a 400% increase in hate crimes. This is not who we are. This is not what we stand for. We were the origin of tremendous strides for gay rights, women's rights. We welcome people of every gender, orientation, religion, nationality. We're famous as a melting pot, a living tapestry of color and variety of all types of people. Now, I'm not here to talk about election reform or freedom of speech or the environment or health care, immigration, torture, nuclear weapons, or any of the other serious ways that our presidential administration is threatening a fundamental fiber of our country. Today I have only one concern. What can we do to help the people right around us who've been directly harmed by the presidential administration or by people who've been empowered to commit hate crimes because they feel it's okay just because the guy who owns this building told them so. Come with me on a short trip around the city. We're going to visit some friends who have ideas worth hearing. I am Chongtul Rinpoche, uh, Tibetan Lamas of the Bon tradition. So in our Tibetan way, since we choose one person, that is the, some people can think about, okay, I'm the leader of the country now. I have been chosen of the king of this country. I have the power of this country, whatever I want to do, but it won't be that way. Even he is not, or he is not a good person of the, uh, in the past time. When we choose that person, we put a blessing. We always say, God bless America. The power of the healing, power of the blessing will change everything in the perfect way. And our nation, America, will be blessed. That is the God bless of America. And we, whatever we choose, that mind will change to preserve and serve it for the, our country. That is the, my small message or small my belief. I'm Vivek John Tiwari, and I'm a writer and producer of graphic novels, Broadway theater, television, and film. You know, I, th I think there are three things that every human being should do within their communities. Pay attention, speak out if you can, and be an ally to those who feel that they can't speak out. So important that we all come together to do this, regardless of your, your political leanings or, or what your morals or aspirations are in this new world. Whatever your beliefs are, Pay attention to when those beliefs are being attacked. Speak out if you see those beliefs being attacked and be an ally to those people who for whatever reason feel that they can't speak out on their behalf. That person might feel so shocked that they don't know how to respond or, or they've literally felt like the, the, the foot has been placed on their neck. So be an ally and remove the foot. You know, like stop it, you know, get in there, uh, especially if the victim hasn't, hasn't had a chance to absorb. You know, if you've been paying attention and you see someone that hasn't had a chance to speak out, then you speak out for them. Very, very important that we all come together to do this. Wonderful words, and uh, I thank you so much. Yeah, it's my pleasure. You know, I grew up in Huntsville, Texas and everything that people are now seeing with their camera phones, you know, and all the, um, you know, the, the violent things that have been happening and the police brutality and, you know, all of the, you know, racist things that people are sort of like seeing now because of that. I grew up with that. It was never something that wasn't happening all around me. I, I think this election polarized so many people. They couldn't hide anymore. You know, they really couldn't hide their thoughts, you know, the prejudice, the ignorance, the... I think that's a positive thing, because at least now we know the devil we're dealing with, you know? <laughs> you can surround yourself with that which you already know and believe. Whether your cause is a good one or a bad one, whether your conclusions are healthy or unhealthy, that kind of uniformity ultimately kills everything around it. Take stock of what you forward. If it always confirms and affirms what you already believe, you probably have a problem. But is there some percentage of stuff you say, you know, I don't agree with this, but I think it's smart. 
It's disturbingly compelling because I don't agree with it, but I think it's interesting and it demands attention. Do you ever send those out? If you're sending some of those out, you probably have enough of a critical eye that you might end up passing on some fake news, but not as much. Right? The world is not morally black and white. I'm not, for example, a pacifist, which means I believe there are things you fight for, that you even kill for, because you think it will bring some greater peace. So imagine that's the mix. 99% empathic listening engagement with people whose views we hate, and then 1% saying, no, the time for words is over. I'm going to have to beat on you before you beat on that kid. Cut the bullshit. Tell them the truth. Because the people who are taking control of our government and our, and our communities, they're not using the truth, right? So the truth is the weapon that they are afraid of. It's the thing they're afraid of. Like the original myths and the fables were designed to teach us something, not deceive us of something. Do whatever you need to do to protect your children's heart and their creativity and their sense of joy, but at the same time, tell the truth. I think it's hugely important to get off your duff and stop just being online and thinking that that has an effect on people posting things. Community centers, community gardens like this garden, not only are they a place where you, know, you can get away and open up yourself and your heart or, or get involved in some micro-activism, which is you know, planting a tomato that you'll eat later on, but also the people who show up at community centers, community gardens, community activities, they are spreading information. They come in with word of mouth information that is very powerful. And then, yeah, then you can go home and check it somewhere. Go to your library, go to your internet, go to your older, your sages, the people you trust, and, and talk about it. Very good ideas. Thank you again. Street Wisdom East Village style from Galinsky. Right here. This is a community work that you've done on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Something that one person did to make their neighborhood a little bit nicer for the people who live in it. What would you say to our neighbors who have just been told that they don't belong here? That they do belong here. They're, everyone belongs here. <laughs> America's built around the concept that every immigrant belongs here. I have a child. Day to day I can educate her about what happened and what, you know, she can do, what I can do when she goes to school. She has the right to speak. We all do. And that's the most important thing is we all have the right to speak. What can one person do in their community to make things a little bit better for the people around them? Well, they can um, educate inside the schools about global warming. They, you know, I have to ed educate about racism. It has to be about education. And that's number one. The importance of just being peaceful, of, about being kind. You gotta be kind. Number one, kind. In the word is ahimsa um, in Sanskrit, and that means do the least amount of harm. Within the our blessing, within the our patience, and within our healing, that person will be not harming. Even they are a little rough. Even they are something different way, but from the, our blessing, that person will be turning into the nicely to taking care of our nation as a we elected and as a we choosing him as a servant of our country and our nation. Once we are sending a blessing to the person, person will be changed his or her mind to service full peace and kindness. This is the small message and a very traditional way. And thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. So what did I learn? Well, our daily actions directly affect our neighbors. We can make a difference all the time, not online, but in person. Watch for oppression. 
Be prepared to intervene if someone needs help. Share a smile or lend a hand to someone who doesn't look like you. The country didn't turn racist overnight, but if enough of us show kindness, well, that would be unprecedented unity.